I can't give you any observation to match Nick's excellent uh, combat photographs, so uh, I have to go in a slightly different direction. And being a historian, I will start off with a little bit about the history of the historical section. And uh, this picture here, this is the Kodai Canal Observatory staff in southern India in around about the 1900s. And the reason I'm, I'm showing you this is uh, this lady here, Mary Evershed, is the first director of the historical section. Uh, she sat next to her husband. You might think it's this chap here, but actually it's this one. Uh, the, the director of the observatory, John Evershed, uh, an extremely accomplished uh, solar observer. He won the gold medal of the RAS. Uh, Mary herself was, uh, was, uh, was also a, a solar observer. Uh, this chap here was the, uh, the deputy uh, director, uh, so he had to sit apart from his wife when they were taking the picture there. <laughs> Who knows? For a long time, I thought this was Mary Evershed, but no, it's this one here. Uh, and uh, uh, Mary was a quite remarkable woman. Uh, she's better than the current idiot who runs the section. He, she's an uh, accomplished solar uh, observer in her own right, uh, astronomical historian, and also a Dante scholar. Uh, if you'd like to read more about her, uh, there's an excellent biography come out uh, by Tracy Doherty uh, from Oregon State University, who is also a Dante scholar and an amateur astronomer, so he covers her, uh, her story in admirable depth. Uh, so we got off to a good start. We were a bit late starting up as a section. Uh, it wasn't until 1930 that we got going. So we were a comet section that had already been going for decades by the time that, uh, that, uh, that we got on the scene. Uh, and these are our uh, directors subsequently. Uh, a great bunch, including three, three people who uh, uh, were also presidents of the, uh, of the association, uh, Colin Rowan and Ernest Beat and Derek House. Uh, and I'd like to draw your attention to our very first memoir. We haven't done very many memoirs in our section, but Who's Who in the Moon? A very good read. I still consult it myself. Little potted biographies of everybody on the near side of the moon who's got a crater named after them. There are some pretty obscure people on the moon. Uh, and uh, Mary, uh, along with a lot of other people, but she was the editor. She, uh, she, um, uh, uh, she got together all these. I've seen some of them in the RS library, these little uh, five or six lines telling you who these people were. And one of the reasons I want to talk about this is actually there's a new version of Who's Who in the Moon coming out. I was talking to Brian Jones, uh, the guy who's putting it all together, actually this morning. It got a little bit lost in the pandemic, uh, but finally they're actually putting the, the thing together. Uh, he, uh, Brian was uh, kind enough to, uh, to let me, as the current director, uh, uh, write an introduction to this. So uh, there'll be an updated version of Who's Who in the Moon, uh, more uh, uh, an homage perhaps back to the, the, the original memoir. But look out for that. It's due to come out spring next year. Um, so uh, we were, uh, we, we, uh, we were uh, kept the, the, the section going uh, well into the into the new millennium. Uh, the, the previous directors pr prior to me were more interested in, in regarding the role as more like a, an officer, like uh, the archivist or the librarian. Uh, that they uh, 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 they weren't particularly interested in, in encouraging a sort of wider interest in the history of astronomy, uh, and that's the way that things went. And say up until the turn of the millennium, when along came our sister organisation, the Society for the History of astronomy and they rather overturned the apple cut in the way of thinking about the history of astronomy and really I mean, many many people were were involved in the, the foundation of it but really if there has to be a prime mover it's this chap here dr alan chapman uh, i hope everybody here has seen him lecture in some manner or other he is literally the reason i got into the history of astronomy uh, when I first joined my local society, Coventry in Warwickshire, uh, back in 1986, he came along uh, to give a lecture for Halley's Comet coming along, to, to, to go back to the previous, uh, the, the previous presentation, uh, only he concentrated on Halley the man. And I realised, I was fresh out of university, I'd just done a Masters in Astronomy, uh, that this was a way that I could keep up with the subject and do research without having to either use supercomputers or, uh, or take observations and try and reduce comet measurements or whatever. This was a different way of being able to, to, uh, to look at the subject. So uh, I, I joined the SHA on the, uh, uh, on the, uh, as a founder member. Were you a founder member, James? No, I, 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 perhaps one or two other people were, uh, are members of the SHA. Uh, but uh, through, the, through the early years of the, uh, the 2000s, I contributed quite a few papers on people who were astronomers in my neck of the woods. Because that's, that's what Alan brought to the show. He, he realised it's not just the, the Edwin Hubbles and the, and the Edwin, Hall, Edwin Halleys and so on who are the important people in astronomy. There are people who were doing astronomy in your neighbourhood. 
uh, last uh, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 500 years ago, or whatever, and lots of them have never been studied. Their stories have never been told, and they are remarkably easy to research in these days of the internet and county record offices and, and so many things that one can study. Uh, and he wrote a brilliant book, I don't know if, if you've read it, The Victorian Amateur Astronomer, talking about the tales of, you know, from, from the people working at the professional observatories to the people going to the workers' educational uh, uh, and giving lectures on astronomy, you know, to, to ordinary working men who, with their spare cash, purchased a telescope and did astronomy in, in, in little towns throughout the United Kingdom. It's an inspiring read, inspired me to do the research. So come the end of the, uh, about 2010, I think it was, I was invited to uh, take over the, uh, the, as the section director, historical section, uh, with the intention that we should make it more like the way the SHA were doing, and in particular, to try and organize a section meeting. So we actually did. Uh, our first, we think this is the first ever historical section meeting, only, only took us 80 years to get around to doing it, uh, but uh, you might as well, you know, starting, start as you mean to go on, start with a bang, and indeed, uh, well, starting with a bang is perhaps not what we, what we should say with Fred Hoyle, of course, was uh, in, in great, in, greatly in favour of the steady state theory, but we held it at the Institute of Astronomy in Cambridge, this was the lineup. Uh, in particular, I'll uh, draw attention, uh, Dr. Lee MacDonald, who was my deputy uh, uh, section director for the first 10 years that, uh, that I was in charge. He's a proper historian. He, he uh, curtailed my wilder instincts uh, as an amateur uh, and, uh, and pr produced lots of excellent talks and lots of excellent articles, thoroughly researched and so on. Jeremy and Bob, you know, and then on the, on the end, uh, I'm sure many of you will know, Simon and Jacqueline Mitten. Uh, they, they independently, Simon and Jacqueline independently approached the historical section to ask if they could give a talk. <laughs> it probably means they don't talk over breakfast if they each uh, separately contact with me to say. Uh, Simon wanted to give a talk about Fred Hoyle, of whom he had written an excellent biography, and Jacqueline wanted to talk about uh, Mariah Mitchell, the great comet observer from, uh, from, from North America. Two very significant figures from the history of astronomy. Uh, we had a great time. Jay Tate came along from the uh, from uh, uh, from the uh, uh, from night and from the Space Guard Centre uh, gave a very entertaining talk about moving the uh, the telescope to 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 uh, to uh, out tonight and so it, it loosely 20th century astronomy. Mariah Mitchell uh, scrapes in, I think, as uh, uh, primarily 19th century, but, but we had a great time um, and we uh, we've just about close on averaged. Uh, a, a section meeting every year since it's the high spot of the section year uh, we uh, and we try to move around the country we went to Soho House the the home of the Lunar Society in Birmingham Winchester weekend up to York a uh, superb meeting at the National Maritime Mu Museum in Greenwich uh, organized joint with the SH with the Society of the Astronomy uh, Liverpool uh, Birmingham the, B the BMI is the Birmingham Midland Institute which is the home of the uh, Society for the History of Astronomers fantastic uh, I'm not just saying this because the librarian is in the room, their fantastic Robert Staywell Ball Library. Uh, we end up to Scotland, great time at Smith Museum in Scotland, uh, another one in Newbury, and then of course the pandemic struck. So our last couple of meetings have been webinars over, over Zoom. I'm hoping we'll go back to the real world uh, for our next meeting. It may well be at the BMI, if you will, if you will have us. To, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, whilst Zoom has been fun, I think uh, we prefer the real world. Uh, it does have advantages, of course, holding a webinar. Our last one was with uh, 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 Wayne Orchester, Professor Wayne Orchester of the Centre for Astrophysics, the University of Southern Queensland, who gave us, uh, these days doesn't even live in Queensland, he lives in Chiang Mai in Northern Thailand uh, with his wife and research assistant, Darren E. Lingling. Uh, so he gave us a really excellent talk from Thailand. Uh, obviously, uh, the travel expenses to England are, are, are rather, rather too large, but uh, he can give us a, a, a webinar uh, over the internet, and so uh, that, that way we can get speakers from around the world. Um, if you haven't watched it, it's still out there on the, on the BAA's YouTube website. It's a, a very ent entertaining fact fill and loads of things I never knew about the, uh, about the pioneering people who were observing eclipses uh, in, in, during the Victorian era and a surprising connection to a Hollywood musical that I will not tell you any more about. So um, the, the, the diversity of, of what we do in the section is, is immense. We go on to all sorts of subjects. 
Uh, our primarily a means of uh, communicating is through our biannual newsletter, uh, available by invitation. If you would like to receive it, let me know and uh, we can add you to the mailing list. Uh, again, this is something that we started up uh, when Lee and I took over the uh, uh, running of the section. There was an earlier incarnation in the 1990s that went through three or four uh, editions. Uh, we're up to about number 26 now, so I think we're, we're up and running. Uh, in the very first edition of the newsletter, we had a, a, an e, a letter from Neil McNaughton. I've been a member of the BAA for 54 years. And we, we, it, it, isn't it good we've got people in for so long? And so asking about the Otway uh, manu telescope manufacturers and their claim uh, that uh, interesting, it, Otways is that they claim to have been established 1640. I've not heard of Hotway since I came in possession of the catalogue. Wonder if they have been wound up or absorbed. So uh, he was asking for information about this. And as a section, when we get a question like that, we, don't often, we, we may not let it go. Uh, over the next few years, in particular, Alan Thomas researched the history of the Otway company. And it's been about 10 years, and he's still going on. Uh, 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 it gives him an update from time to time. But in our last but one newsletter, a long article about the entire history of the Otway company that can indeed find its way back to the 1640s, but as was at its, uh, uh, at its height during the Victorian era. That's William Close Otway, and, uh, and Alan has done a lot about the, the history of the company and the history of the works there. Uh, so that's the sort of thing uh, people can do, um, is researching history based on suggestions from, from section members. But to give you some idea of some of the other things we do, this one of my favourites is a Lego Antikythera mechanism. <laughs> Carl Herzog in the United States has, uh, has built a, a Lego mechanism so accurate that they fed it in and predicted that there would be a total eclipse on April the 8th. 2024. Uh, information, a prediction that has been elsewhere verified. Uh, I'm sure Nick and myself and many other people in the, in the audience here will be present. Uh, uh, well, Central Texas is where they're, uh, uh, they're recommending here. Uh, uh, we may well be in, uh, in Mexico or, or further up to the Great Lakes, Niagara Falls, Nova Scotia, and many excellent places to see that eclipse from. But uh, don't forget to take your Lego Antikythera mechanism to, to figure out where the next one might be. That's quite impressive. I know why, why the ancient Greeks didn't use Lego, I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, Gerard Gilligan, who's the, the current president of the SHA, wrote an excellent article on O'Neill's Bridge, uh, the, uh, the, the supposed large structure to be seen on the moon, which looks bridge-like as a, as a, 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 a suspense across one of the, uh, uh, across one of the, the craters. Uh, I, I ruled out subsequently there is no such structure there, but an interesting article on how how even the, the great minds, the people the, 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 who do study the moon so much, can be misled by the lighting effects that are on the moon. Um, yeah, not to be outdone, I've, I've written several articles for the, the newsletter. Uh, just illustrative, this is a, 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 a following up on something called the Box of Stars. I don't think you got any here today, James, do you? But the SHA, if you go along to their stand at one of the, uh, at, uh, at one of the things that they attend, the IAS, the International Astronomy Show, for example, will sell you a box of stars. Uh, I assume they've got any in stock still, but they, it's a beautiful thing. And it's actually a modern-day reprint of something called Urania's Mirror, uh, which were some Victorian educational cards. So there's a card for each of the constellations with the constellation marked up in the, in the old style with the, uh, with the pretty pictures and so on. But moreover, with the stars uh, knocked little holes through. Uh, so the, biggest, the brightest stars have bigger holes and the, uh, the, 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 the fainter stars have smaller holes. So you hold them up to the light and you get light, uh, uh, light pictures of the constellations. Probably best done in a sort of Victorian hovel with a candle in the corner. That's probably the best way of uh, doing it. But uh, they are still popular and they're still beautiful. Uh, and uh, the original edition was uh, introduced as being by a lady, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, anonymous, and there was a lot of speculation for many years as to who that lady might be. Caroline Herschel, for example, Mary Somerville, uh, and you know, there are other possible candidates. But uh, Peter Hingley from the, uh, uh, from the RAS library, late, late Peter Hingley, uh, successfully identified the author as being the Reverend Richard Rouse Bloxham, who's a, 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 a cleric in uh, Brinklow in Warwickshire. Uh, Brinklow happens to be about four or five miles to the west of Rugby, where I live. So he falls in my remit. He's one of my dead astronomers. Uh, and with the help of the, the local history group in rugby, we found out a little bit about his life story. It's very closely connected to, uh, to rugby school, for example, which has its own observatory. 
Uh, this is, uh, it, it, he has almost no other astronomical connections. But really the point I, I would like to make is you never know what falls into your lap. I mean, I've, I find astronomers in the rugby area faster than I can study them. My, my list of people I'd like to know about is, is not going down. There are also, the, the richness of the tapestry of astronomical history around the country is simply extraordinary. It's fertile territory to investigate. It's fun. The other thing I would say is, I work with the Rugby Local History Group. I've got friends there uh, I've known through uh, you know, for, for other things, but they're, they're helpful and they, they like the context that an astronomer can bring to it. In some cases, they will know that the guy had some sort of scientific connections, but they don't know or understand what he did. And they're only too pleased to help you out with the fine details, when, who was born, when and where, uh, and if you, you, you explain to them what the context is, what these beautiful cards were in the case of, 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 of Rouse Bloxham. So it can be a very uh, fulfilling uh, partnership between the historians, the local historians and the astronomers. And uh, what we also like to do in the newsletter is, is let people uh, reminisce, uh, is tell them our, our stories. We call this the primary source material. Uh, we are a lucky generation, or at least people my sort of age, I remember the moon landings. Yeah, that not too many of the world's population, you know, it's a, a declining proportion of the world's population who actually remember them as they happened. We are a privileged bunch of people to have seen so much happening so quickly. Uh, and I encourage our members to write in and tell them all, all about their stories. So Ron Palgrave, in 56, 12 years old, building his first telescope. And then Peter Morris, I became interested in astronomy. I, 1956, I was very much a child of the space age. It talks about his, uh, his astronomy-related books uh, and how they inspired him to become an astronomer. So again, I would, uh, I would uh, ask you very much, if you'd like to, write into us, tell us about your own astronomical story. It really is not only of current interest, but for future interest historians down the line. Um, of course, if you don't wait, if, if you, uh, 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 you don't produce anything quick enough, well, you've got to do it eventually because you're going to pass away. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of obituaries around the people in uh, in the BAA. Uh, the journal is excellent for, uh, for for telling the stories of our members. Uh, and uh, a few years ago, uh, one of our uh, uh, one of our section members, Bill Barton, also an SHA member, suggested to us that we did what the RAS was: was to collect together all the obituaries. And, and Bill took on this, this quite large task because there are an awful lot of obituaries. So on our historical section website, you have a, 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 I say searchable, you can go down letter by letter. So if there's and somebody you are interested about from the history of the BAA, it's a wonderful resource, a great read. It's drill down into there and see if there's an obituary for them. I'm not quite up to date because I haven't quite got the hang of the new uh, relaunch website yet, but uh, pretty much all the obituaries we've ever done, hundreds of them, are all there. They're a great read, really worth doing. Uh, so uh, when Lee decided he was going to move on from uh, being deputy director a couple of years ago, uh, Bill uh, took over as the deputy section director and brought some new and excellent ideas to, to, to the section, in, including the obituary database. Bill lives in East Anglia in Suffolk. Uh, and, uh, and unlike myself, he concentrates on the astronomers who are local. Uh, there's a couple in particular, these two fantastic women, uh, both uh, meteor observers primarily, although they, did, they studied other things. Fiametta was, uh, was primarily a, a meteor observer. Uh, two very, uh, they were friends, they knew each other, they were co-hosts of the, uh, co-directors co of the meteor section, uh, but very different uh, life stories. Uh, Fiametta Wilson was in show business, uh, she had her own mandolin orchestra. Uh, uh, again, uh, with the help of the, uh, uh, with the, the historians, we can find out more about her these days, which was information that wasn't available at the time, like the inconvenient first husband. Uh, she, uh, uh, she was born Helen Worthington in Lowestoft in Suffolk. She married Mr. Webster. I'm not sure it went too well, because in the early years of the 20th century, about 1905, I think, she went out to Canada on a holiday as Helen Webster and came back a few weeks later as Fiametta Walderhoff. Allegedly, allegedly from Russia. Uh, I think some of that might have been a stage name for to give some, give some, uh, you know, some background for a, a fake persona on stage. But I wonder if that was an excuse to hide away the inconvenient first husband until she'd had a chance to divorce him. Uh, she then married Mr. Wilson, so she became uh, Fiametta Wilson, uh, and uh, she then took up uh, astronomy and more or less gave up the overnight. 
the, uh, uh, the music and became a prolific. Uh, uh, she, she, she studied meteori meteors every opportunity she got. She uh, observed for, for, for decades and decades. Uh, Grace Cook came from a slightly different direction. Uh, she was from a very supportive family who, uh, who, who uh, there was an observatory out the back, uh, for, you know, and then, uh, uh, so she was able to do excellent astronomy from home, as it were. And she was uh, this, uh, in, the, uh, in, in the Daily Express as being the first person in Britain to uh, observe Nova Aquilae in 1918. Uh, hers was a story of increasingly genteel poverty. That's the poverty that increased, not the gentility. Uh, uh, the, the family fortune essentially ran out, so she moved from house to house, getting sm smaller each time. Uh, but uh, uh, again, she contributed to the BAA for decades and decades of observations uh, and so on. Well-known member of the BAA. Two of our prime observers. And I'm really pleased to say that Bill has had the opportunity that they're naming a primary school in Suffolk for, uh, for Grace Cook. Uh, and be, uh, the naming ceremony will be taking place later on this year. Uh, this is something else I find, I've, I've, I've personal experience myself. David did so the other week, uh, unveiling the plaque to uh, our, two of our great members, Walter and Annie Maunder. Uh, I had the pleasure, along with Carolyn Bedwell of the SHA, of uh, arranging for a plaque to the honor William Pearson, one of the co-founders of the Royal Astronomical Society. People are fascinated to find out about the people who lived in their midst. I'm very keen to honor them once they've found out about these extraordinary people who lived in their towns, lived in their villages. You know, we put up plaques, we name schools after them. Uh, if, we, if we get the opportunity to go and talk to, uh, talk to, to neighborhoods and tell them all about the extraordinary astronomy that's been taking in place in the neighborhoods, then it benefits absolutely everybody. So I'm going to stop at that point. Please do join us. Come along to our section meetings. Uh, 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 let me know if you'd like to be joined, uh, added to our mailing list. But for one last thing to give you a practical thing to get your head stuck into, uh, this from Wayne Orchester. Uh, this is a photograph of an observatory uh, with presumably the, the owner of the observatory sat outside. Um, we, we don't know. Where is it? What is it? What's the telescope? And who is it? Uh, if you look on the internet, there's suggestions that it may be Victorian, Australia, Bendigo area, uh, but Wayne is not sure. He's not sure that even is an Australian observatory. So it's up on the BAA forum. Uh, Bill Barton posted it for us. Uh, we'll put it into the next edition of the newsletter if we haven't got an answer. Even if we have got an answer, we'll probably put the, the picture in. But uh, this kind of thing can be fun, finding out these sorts of mysteries. So I hope I have enthused you. Uh, please come along to our meetings. Have a look at the newsletter. Astronomical history is fun. Thank you.